Shalom and shalom, good day and good day, and welcome to another funky ba- uh, funky <laughs> Bible commentation. There we go. <laughs> funky baby commentation. Okay, so today we're diving into Esther in the Greek, chapter 4, and I'm just going to go down on the breakdown about it before we read it. So number one, King Azurius remembers Vashti. After Vashti's feast and celebrations, King Azurius remembers Queen Vashti and her defiance of his command and search for a new queen. His servant suggests to find fair young virgins to be presented to the king. These virgins would go through purification and beauty preparations, and the one who is pleased, the king the most, would become the new queen. The king approves of this new idea. Number three, Mordecai and Esther. In Sushan Palace, there was a Jew named Mordecai who had been taken captive from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. He raised his uncle's daughter, Hashtash, Hadash, Hadassah, sorry, Hadassah, also known as Esther, as his own daughter, as she was an orphan. Esther becomes a candidate. When the order to find a new queen is given, Esther is brought to the king's palace under the care of Haggai, the king's chamberlain. Esther's beauty and charm win her favor, and she quickly receives her purification treatments. She is placed in the best spot in the woman's house. Esther's identity concealed. Mordecai instructs Esther not to reveal her people or kindred. Number six, the year of preparation. Each maiden has a year of preparation before seeing the king. This consists of six months with oil and myrrh and six months with sweet odors and other purifying treatments. Meeting the king. Once a maiden's turn comes, she goes to the king. If the king is pleased with her, she is called by name for subsequent meetings. Esther wins favor with everyone who sees her. Esther becomes queen. In the tenth month, during the seventh year of King Azurius' reign, Esther is taken to one of the king's houses. Azurius loves Esther more than any and all other virgins and makes her queen, crowning her with the royal crown. King Azurius' feast. To celebrate Esther's coronation, King Azurius holds a grand feast for his princes and servants. He releases provinces and distributes gifts according to his royal generosity. Mordecai at the king's gate. Mordecai has uh, been uh, raising Esther, sits at the king's gate, a place of significance and counsel in the city. The plot against the king. Two of the king's chamberlains, uh, Bagath and Tarash, become angry and conspire to lay hands on King Azurius. Mordecai's warnings. Mordecai learns about the plot and informs Queen Esther, who conveys the information to the king on Mordecai's behalf. Punishment and conspirators. An investigation is conducted in confirming the conspiracy. As a result, Big Thath and Teresh are, ha- are hanged on a tree, and their actions are recorded in the King's Chronicles. This chapter sets the stage for a pivotal role of Esther and Mordecai will play in the unfolding events of the story, where they use their positions to save the Jewish people from a grave threat. So let us move to reading Esther in the Greek, chapter 4. Verse 1, KJB. After these things, when the wrath of the king Azurius uh, was appeased, he remembered Vashti and uh, what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint office, officers in the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair virgins unto Shishtan, the palace, to the house of the of the woman unto the custody of the hedge of the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shishtan the palace there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shemi, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jekiah king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shishtan the palace, 
uh, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him. And he speedily gave her the things of purification, which such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and preferred her and her maids unto the best palace of the house of the women. Esther had not shewed her people, nor... Uh, nor her uh, kindred, for Mordecai had changed her that she should not chew it. And Mordecai walked to, walked every day before the court of the woman's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Verse 12. Now when every maiden's turn was to come to King Azurius, after that she had been twelve months, according to the manner of the women. For so were the days of purification accomplished to wit, six months with oil of myrrh and six months of sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned into the, into the second house of the women, to the custody of Shagaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, that she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abigail, uh, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto king Azurius, into his royal house, in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head, and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all the princes and servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces, and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not shewed her kindred nor her people, as Mordecai had changed her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, with, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Begath and Teresh, of those who kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hands on the king Azurius. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out, therefore they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of Chronicles before the king. So let us move into prayer based on uh, Esther 4. Heavenly Father, as we read the story of Esther, we were reminded how you work in mysterious and wonderful ways, often using individuals, unlikely candidates for the roles you have prepared for them. In this passage, we see Esther, a young Jewish woman chosen as queen and hidden from her heritage as instructed by Mordecai. We also see how her beauty and grace captivated King Azurius, and she was crowned queen becoming an instrument in your divine plan, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We pray, Lord, Yeshua, for the wisdom and courage to recognize your guidance in our lives, Holy Spirit, just as Esther followed Mordecai's counsel and acted in obedience to her calling. Help us to be open to your leading and respond faithfully to the opportunities you place before us. As we read the plot to harm the king, Thwarted by Mordecai's vigilance and Esther's courage, we are reminded of your providence and protection. May we trust that you watch over us and are aware of the plots and threats we face in our own lives. Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray that you, um, we thank you for the powerful story of Esther, which reminds us of the sovereignty, of your sovereignty, and the impact that one individual's faith and obedience can have on the lives of many. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. So I'll finish with a song based off of Esther 4. It's titled, For Such a Time as This. In the days of change and unknown fate, a king remembered Vashti, his former mate. He called for virgins, young and fair, to find a queen, a royal heir. For such a time as this, we rise and stand, guided by the Lord's gracious hand. When darkness looms, we'll trust his way, for in his time he'll lead the day. In Shishtan lived a Jew so wise, Mordecai with faith in his eyes. He raised a kin, fair Esther's name, a heroine of old in God's grand game. For such a time as this, 
We rise and stand, guided by the Lord's gracious hand. When darkness looms, we'll trust his way, for in his time he'll lead the day. In the king's house, Esther's charm did shine, obtain favor, a destiny divine. She revealed not her kin or race, or being Mordecai in humble grace. For such a time as this, we rise and stand, guided by the Lord's gracious hand. When darkness looms, we'll trust his way, for in his time he'll lead the day. In the king's gate, secrets conspire, Mordecai's uncovered plot, so desire. Esther heard a courage, uh, and couragely spoke, saving the king, her faith awoke. For such a time as this, we rise and stand, guided by the Lord's gracious hand. When darkness looms, we'll trust his way, for in his time he'll lead the day. Let us remember Esther's story told, a heroine of faith in times of old. For when the moments come, we're called to share. We'll rise in faith, for God is always there. For such a time as this, we rise and stand, guided by the Lord's gracious hand. When darkness looms, we'll trust his way, for in his time he'll lead the day. Shalom and shalom until next time. May God keep you and bless you. Bye for now.